What's cracking, YouTube? Welcome back to the Big Dogs Gotta Eat Fantasy Football channel. As always, it's your boy Nick. Today we're doing a quick hit reaction on the Kenneth Dixon news. Torres meniscus is gonna need a full repair. Thus, he's gonna be out for the entire season. Originally, it was reported he was gonna be out six to eight weeks, which shakes up things in that backfield because it was crowded and now it's not so crowded. So I wanted to do a little fallout video of what we should expect entering 2017 and the Baltimore backfield. So let's get into it. So I'll start off by talking about Kenneth Dixon for a little bit. Great tweet by uh, Evan Silva yesterday. He was like, look at Kenneth Dixon's resume so far. Very hyped up, but he's a fourth round running back. Already had two knee injuries, his MCL and his torn meniscus. He needed to serve a four game suspension for PED violations. And he couldn't beat out Terrence West in uh, running back by committee last year. It's actually out touch and out carried even when he was back. So despite all this crazy hype and all the reports you see, Dixon really hasn't done shit since he entered the league. I know it's only one year and there's not a lot to work off of, but it's not a strong start. Just something to think about as a, as a dynasty owner. Prior to the news, Dixon was getting picked before Terrence West in drafts, a good 20 and 25 spots before him, even though he had to serve the four game suspension. Dixon, realistically, he has underwhelming speed, underwhelming strength, good burst, like agility. He moves well as a smaller guy, but he wasn't utilized near the goal line. He had one target inside the 10, two rushes inside the five, six red zone rushes overall. Not a high volume of usage down there. But let's get into the two running backs that will be used this year in fantasy in that Baltimore backfield that we know for sure up to this point. Start off with Terrence West. Current ADP, as of the injury yesterday, 135 overall, running back 42, which is crazy. If you've been watching my videos, I was already talking up Terrence West and Danny Woodhead prior to the Dixon injury. I love them as late round guys. I love them as guys who were gonna provide you value in any sort of league before the injury. Now it happened, now they're gonna kill my ADP. Now I'm not gonna be able to draft them for the value anymore. Dixon wasn't used in those areas of the field, right? He wasn't used near the goal line. Terrence West was, he was that main guy. He had seven carries inside the five yard line, 28 red zone carries overall. Now when you look at last season, right? Dixon also missed weeks one through four last year. I was looking at the numbers and the first week that Dixon actually had a good amount of touches was week nine. He had 11 touches. It was his first double digit touch game. So I would say that's when he started making an impact. So you look at all the games prior to that, right? Weeks one through seven, they had a week eight by. Terrence West was averaging 15.1 touches a game. From week nine onwards, when Dixon was a lot more involved, his 15.1 dropped to 13.4. So still pretty heavily utilized in that backfield. It dropped a, a touch and a half per game, which is really not that big of a deal. I mean, when Dixon came back in week five, that was his first game back, West out-touched him or out-carried him 139 to 88 for the rest of the season. So still way more carries than Dixon had in the backfield. I think with Dixon out, you know, you see that number go back to about 15 touches a game for West, which is like really solid RB2 numbers. You, you look at West as a player, right? He's only 26 years old. He's not old. He was pretty highly touted coming out of college as well. He put up huge numbers. He went to a smaller school in, uh, I, th I think it was Towson in Maryland. Put up huge numbers there, so it was a lot of hype for him coming into the league. It was kind of a bust his first couple years in Cleveland and uh, and then coming over to Baltimore. It wasn't really used in 2015, but last year he had a really good year, right? He set career highs in rush attempts, rushing yards, total touchdowns, uh, re receptions, receiving yards. So just a career year for him, really good overall, right? A thousand total yards and six touchdowns, and he's going off the board at RB42. Even if Dixon didn't get hurt, that is stupid value because you're getting a starting running back in the NFL who's gonna get a lot of early down work and a lot of goal line work for at least the first four games. A great fill-in if you're going for a guy like Ezekiel Elliott, something like that. And you look at West, his size, right? He's like 5'10", 220, 225, perfect for the goal line. There's no reason he won't see all of those rushes down there. He had an 80th percentile um, weight adjusted speed score coming out of school, so very quick, very fast for his size. I mean, prior to the injury too, you, you go back to June, in early June he was named the unquestioned starter there in Baltimore. He was 12th in the NFL last year with rushes of 15 yards or more, he had 10 of them, so not just he's not just a plotter, he doesn't just you know wiggle his way through the line, three yards, four yards, cloud of dust. He's a guy who can get into the secondary, can get into the 
the linebackers, the, the safeties, and, and make moves and break tackles and, and run for those 15 plus yard carries. What a really interesting fact I found, if you go to player profiler, and I didn't even realize they had these kind of stats on there. Terrence West was number one in the NFL in yards per carry versus stack boxes. So eight, eight defenders in the box or more. He averaged 6.6 .6 yards per carry. Number one in the NFL among running backs. And it's not like it was a small sample size to skew things. He had 193 carries last year. I think it was like 21st in the NFL, something like that. Last year, like I said, he had over 1,000 yards, six total touchdowns, while splitting time with Kenneth, Kenneth Dixon, Kyle Juszczyk, uh, Justin Forsett towards the second half of the season. Really good numbers for him. He's very underrated as a back. So what do I think is going to happen with his ADP? He's at 135, running back 42. That will drop down to probably, he might drop 50 spots, possibly 60. You might see Terrence West going off the board around pick, 80 uh top 30 running back which i still think is good value for, for that i think he's a good bet to finish with a thousand yards again and six seven eight total touchdowns depending on how how, how the opportunity breaks on that part of the field next you got danny woodhead now i'm not going to get deep into player analysis on danny woodhead because i've done that already like if you watch my top sleepers running backs you already know i was super high on danny woodhead but here here are the facts right he's turning 33 this season coming off that ACL tear. That should be the only, only, only worry you even have about him is the possible injury risk. Right now, he's going off the board 71st overall as running back 26. I think he's almost as sure a bet of any running back outside like the top 10 or top 12 to finish inside the top 15 PPR formats. You just look at the makeup of this Ravens team, right? Their running backs combined for 163 targets last year. Caught 122 balls between, again, Terrence West, Kenneth Dixon, Kyle Juszczyk, and Justin Forsett. Kyle Juszczyk actually led the team in targets and receptions. Now, Juszczyk, Dixon, and Forsett are all gone. So what does that mean? Woodhead is going to get a huge piece of, uh, of the work, right? Even Terrence West saw 40, 40 targets. So keep those 40 targets for West. He could have all those targets. That still leaves 120 targets in the highest pass volume offense over the last two years for Woodhead, right? And let's be realistic, he probably won't get 120 targets. But even if you drop that to, to 90, take off 30% of, of the possible targets that are left there, even if you give him 90 targets, he's gonna come up with at least 75 catches. That's a monster PPR season for a running back. I would say though, like this, this injury, the Ken Dixon injury, is definitely nowhere near as valuable to Danny Woodhead as it is to Terrence West. Because Terrence West is really the one battling Dixon for carries. You know, Danny Woodhead is not over the last, um, basically over his career, he's had probably a share of his team's carries, like 20 to 25%. I saw a tweet, I think it was like 22% of the teams that he's been on, he's had that, that percentage of their carries. So he's not a big rushing threat, but I mean, this will give him more overall opportunity because Dixon's a, a well-rounded player. So he would probably eat up some receptions, probably some, some red zone work. And that's where I think you're gonna see the biggest bump from Woodhead. He'll probably score a couple more touchdowns with Dixon out. But even if Dixon was there, right? He comes back week five, Woodhead's not going anywhere. He's still the pass catching back. He's still the third down back. You've heard rave reports from Joe Flacco from John Harbaugh all offseason about how he's the best pass catching back they've had since Ray Rice. And Ray Rice absolutely tore up the NFL as a receiving back back when he played before he punched his way out the league. I was looking at some numbers, some interesting, I don't know, opportunity numbers, I guess. Since 2010, Woodhead has seen right around two red zone opportunities per game. So opportunities are either a target or a rush attempt. So two red zone opportunities per game since 2010 which shows consistency. I think 2010 was the season he played some with the Patriots, some with the Jets, and then he was on the Patriots for a couple of years, then he moved over to the Chargers, obviously. Now he's on Baltimore. So a big part of that offense, wherever he's been. The Ravens are losing. check their most utilized pass catching back. Dixon, another athlete who could definitely catch the ball out of the backfield. They have Dennis Pitagon, who led all tight ends in the NFL in receptions last year. So a lot of those dump offs, those short passes over the middle, that you might see near the goal line, you might see in the red zone, you might see just from in between the 20s, a lot of those are gonna go to Woodhead now. So what I'm nervous, if you've watched my channel, I was so, I've been so high in Woodhead, and now this is gonna absolutely kill his ADP. ADP is 71st overall right now, running back 26. Wouldn't be surprised if it shot up to like, if, if he becomes a fifth to sixth round pick. He'll probably get into like the a, a, a fifth round pick, I would say. So his ADP will probably drop about 10 to 15 spots. He'll be in the top 20 running backs. I just don't want the price to get too high because like he doesn't have a crazy ceiling. 
but he has a really nice floor. Thankfully for me, if you watched mine. Also, thank you for the help on the uh, sleeper video. I mean, uh, keeper video. I asked you guys to pick two between Garcon, Breeze, Woodhead, and Deshaun. And this pretty much wraps it up for me. I'm going to have to keep Woodhead now because of this injury. But I think I was going to keep Woodhead anyways. Pri a lot of you guys were like, oh, Dixon's injury. Prior to us knowing that he was actually out for the year, he would have been back in time for his suspension anyway. So I don't think the injury that he was reportedly supposed to miss six to eight weeks would have made a difference there in Woodhead's projection. I just loved him either way because he had that clear cut role in this offense that passes the ball so much. So those are my thoughts on Woodhead. Now, what else? The team has to add some depth there, right? They can't just roll with Terrence West and Danny Woodhead. They signed Bobby Rainey. He's 29, he's gonna turn 30 this year. Was with the Giants last year, was with Tampa Bay the year before. Uh, I mean, I don't hate Bobby Rainey. I doubt he'll make any sort of fantasy impact. Maybe, maybe he actually eats up like 30 targets or something in that offense, which would hurt Woodhead a little bit but he has not been effective in a few years. Average 3.7 yards per carry last year, 3.6 year before. He only had 22 carries over the last two years, 23 receptions total. So he, he's a better receiving back. He's more like a scat back. I don't really see him eating up any work there. And they also have Buck Allen, J I think it's Javorius Allen, who was a hyped up rookie coming out of USC. Two years ago, I think it was, he was drafted in 2015. Didn't play well. That is rookie season, barely even played last year. He was a healthy scratch for like a lot of the games. I think he only played eight or nine games last year. I'm not looking for him to make an impact. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they went out through free agency and got someone else. You know, they have D'Angelo Williams is out there, Rashad Jennings. Would be crazy as if they signed Carlos Hyde. I don't know if, the, I like I doubt they'll do that because they already have a guy like Terrence West, but that would be interesting. Carlos Hyde going to the Colts would also be, uh, I don't know, I'm getting off sidetracked here, but for now, if they don't sign anyone else, like I said, I think Woodhead's a top 15 PPR play. I think uh, Terrence West is a is an RB2 in standard, 0.5 PPR. Probably not full PPR, because I don't think he'll get a, a great receiving workload, but um, probably top 25, if not, and his draft value right now is way, way up. So both these backs obviously get a nice boost from the Kenneth Dixon injury, and that's that. So. Thumb up the video if you liked it. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore, but I'll see you guys next time.